Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. Bill McMinn, Eric Barfell uh, here with you today. And uh, we're happy to do the podcast. And one of the things I was thinking about was 2 Timothy 3.16. And just uh, the value of the Bible in our lives. Mm-hmm. That really we have what we need right in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So here, I'll read it. And then we, you and I, we can talk about it. All scripture is God breathed, right? It's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. So I've always liked that, that, yeah, for me to live a godly life, I have everything I need. For me to be equipped to do the right thing, I have everything that I need. I don't have to look for other information. There's plenty of information right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I always think back to uh, Moses. How jealous I am of Moses, who the Lord spoke to him in an obvious burning bush. You can't miss it. Right. Uh, A bush, uh, whether it was literally ablaze or, you know, seem to be on fire, whatever right. the Lord is speaking to him. I would love to have that. I would he love to hear the voice of the Lord. I wonder what I have that Moses didn't have the entire Bible in print. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, okay, well, I can't be, I, I shouldn't be too jealous. Cause I have something that he would crave, you know? Right. So no, but no, we, we do have the whole Bible. We got every translation known to man, at our fingertips right, right here. Absolutely. Uh, so, which is cool. And sometimes I like looking, especially when it's right there with, you know, well, how did the SV NLT, yeah. uh, CSB and mm-hmm. you know, how did they translate or handle that verse? Cause you're looking at it, let's say in the original language and yeah. you're kind of wondering how the different translators handled a certain word. Yeah. Yeah. It's a definitely. little trickier or maybe it didn't have a lot of use uh, in the Bible. So only shows up one time. Mm-hmm. Well, how did they handle that? So yeah, I, I do enjoy it from that perspective as well, but you have no excuse not to read it. I right. mean, here it is. All scripture is breathed out by God. And so I look at that Genesis through Revelation as being from the word of God. And even sometimes people say, well, of course, the Bible says it about the Bible. Yeah, but Peter in 2 Peter 3 also said it about Paul. And he said they distort Paul's letters like they do the other scripture. So he was Mm -hmm. equating what came from Paul, even at the time Paul is writing with scripture. And no one would ever doubt. And in those days, people did not doubt the authority of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. The New Testament now is this time being written. And even as Peter said, he saw the authority and, and Paul talking about how, how God spoke to me, you know, what, what I've received, I'm passing on to you, mm-hmm. but that's all recorded. So what do you think about, do you think there would ever be like a third Testament or a new, new Testament? You know, you got the old Testament, the new, and then the new, new. Do I think that that's interesting. I've literally never thought about that. So I'm going to say no. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't expect so because revelation says this at the end of the book of revelation, do not add to my word. Yeah, right. Do not subtract to my word. Right. And that's your last book in the train of the New Testament. And I, I remember talking to a professor and he goes, look, why if, if God is saying that about Revelation, then we can be pretty sure he's going to say it about any other. And then mm-hmm. he pointed me to this scripture because this is when I was uh, graduating. I was getting ready or had graduated. I was getting ready to be ordained. And so he was talking to me. He goes, well, Bill, you know, look, look at this verse. You know, when the canon, he goes, we, there's a little saying we have, the canon is closed. The canon meaning the Bible. Canon was a word used for measuring stick, a rod, mm-hmm. like we measure ourselves up against God's word. Mm-hmm. He said, we're not expecting any new revelation that has the authority of scripture, that yeah. we have everything that we need to be uh, to be thoroughly equipped Yeah, absolutely. right here in scripture. So as a Bible church guy, one of the things that I have to realize, I mean, Mark and I have had this conversation, you and I have had this conversation just even on this day is being a Bible church means something. It means whatever we say and whatever we teach has to be from here, not our personal opinion. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Right. And that, and sometimes that's the danger you run into. I see uh, people love to share on social media, their little infographics of scripture or good thoughts and stuff. Right. I'm so, sometimes I'm like, this is based in the Bible, but it's not actually from the Bible. Right. But sometimes they're like, oh, well, someone else shared it on their page, or I've heard this person say, it's like, look it up. That's not in the Bible, actually. (laughs) Well, we've actually had this conversation this week as we've looked various things up. And then you realize, I'm like, no, I thought Paul said this. And then we, so we go, we get on Google, we look through the passage where we think, oh, we didn't see it. You know, well, man, we read through where we're pretty sure it was. And then we get on Google, we start Googling it and searching it. No. 
That was yeah, never right, whatever. Right. You heard something that's not even in the Bible. So you always have to constantly bring yourself back to, mm-hmm. no, what did the what did the Bible say about it? There are there are doctrines. Now you have the doctrine of the Trinity. Granted, the word Trinity is not used in the Bible per se. The Bible says that God the Father is God, says that Jesus is God, says the Holy Spirit is God, says God is one. So you mm-hmm. put that together, and that's how you come up with that doctrine. Right, right. There are other doctrines, like uh, Provenient Grace used to be a doctrine that was, it is still taught uh, by in the Arminian, let's say Wesleyan schools of thought, where it would mean that God is going to give every single person in the world a chance to say yes or no to God. It's just a provenient grace that God gives to all mankind. Now, I remember sitting in seminary class and my professor talking about that. He said, well, that is a nice sounding doctrine. It's nowhere to be found in scripture. Mm. You can't make it up. And again, then I have to come back to say, yeah, I, I appreciate that this church, this church, this denomination, this denomination said that. Where is it here? Mm. I'm not interested in what man says. Yeah, right, right. Where, where is it here that mm-hmm. says that we have to do it? And I've always found like I can't take my preferences, my wishes, and make God's word say what it does not in fact say. Yeah, right. No, and, you know, having having like a knee-jerk reaction opinion to Scripture, right. you know, I think about James 1, 2 through 4, considered joy when you face trials. Right. Huh, that sucks. Right. That's my opinion on that. Right. No, I, I can't alter it. I can't change it. Right. I, I can't add to that. Uh, and unfortunately I've seen a lot of people do more often than not when I have seen people add and take away and, and, um, manipulate scripture, it's generally to justify some sort of sin that they're living in, right? which is terribly sad to see for a lot of reasons. Um, and, and as a result of that, they end up slowly slipping away right. from the faith. Right. They don't actually, cause it's based on like nothing. Right. You, you're quite literally making stuff up. And now this is your, your belief is what you've made up based on something, but you're so far off of it. Right. You're, you're not on the foundation. Right. Oh, I've had people come up to me and say, Hey Bill, you know, all these new people come to the church and this was 20 plus years ago. You got to tell them this, this, this. And I said, well, okay, of all these three things, you just told me not one of them's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So how in the world am I going to say it? Basically what they wanted me to say is this is my opinion on these social issues Mm -hmm. and my opinion on these social issues. I want you to proclaim. No, my job is not to proclaim what you think about social issues. I can only say what God says. This is it. Mm -hmm. Like this is my authority. Once you come off of here, you're playing on dangerous ground. And once you're starting to say, well, God, yeah, like, well, no, God, you just need to reveal something more to me. Like this is just, isn't quite enough for me here. I think that Bible's it's big. Yeah. Right. Right. There's plenty to keep me occupied right here. Trying Mm -hmm. to live this out. Right. It's, 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 right? It's spelled out and I love it. So again, I can't just get out there and start making up stuff like the bill hobby horse of things. And I think it's dangerous because then all of a sudden somebody's going to say, Oh, well, Bill said, you know, that I needed to do this as a Christian, not written in the Bible. And then it becomes an obstacle between them and Christ. Right. Where Christ couldn't stand all the man-made traditions the Pharisees mm-hmm. made up. He hated it because it was actually, like he said, making you twice as much a son of hell as the other guys, yeah. right? As 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 the first one who's teaching it, you know, now your disciples are going to be twice the son of hell because you're teaching them all these traditions mm-hmm. that made them judgmental, that made them lack love, that made them, and it didn't have anything to do with the Bible. And yeah. Jesus Christ was coming to set that straight. Yeah, no, that's why it says, uh, I think it's also James, correct me if I'm wrong, teachers are going to be judged more harshly. It says that there, yes, absolutely. That, that is James, yeah. yeah. That, why? Because they're going to be responsible for what they're teaching. Right. And, I mean, in youth group, I, I'm i open with the students. I say, hey, like, I want this to be God's word. I, You're not going to be changed by my opinions. Right. You're just not. I want this to be on God's uh based on God's word. And if it's my opinion on something, I'll let you know right. while I'm saying it kind right. of thing. But like, uh, we, uh, obviously we just did a, a big series on dating relationships, sex, that kind of stuff. And it's like, I mean, I prefaced every week with, I want you to bring you, I want you to bring your Bible every week, but I want you these weeks to bring your Bible open up. Is this what is what I'm saying? Is this aligned with God's word? Right. If not, that, that's a problem. I want right. you to present that to me, right. whatever. So, and, and no, having like them 
read the text as w- like with me, uh, along with yep, me. It's like, absolutely. this is what my Bible, does yours say the same thing? Right. But it's not what we think because the world is telling us something totally different. Right. So just because you think it and you hear it elsewhere doesn't mean the Bible also says it. Right. And, and we get so hung up on um, things we've heard. Right. Oh, I heard it here. Okay. Does that, how does that hold up against God's word? Right. Because, yeah, this the Bible ought to be, for us believers, needs to be the measuring stick of our right. life, the index of how we live our life. Right. So just because you have a feeling, just because you hear it elsewhere, just because other people are doing it, doesn't mean it's what you ought to be doing. Well, I mean, you're, you're bringing up a good point. I think sometimes, you know, we're living in a day where feeling and experience trumps the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I've always been taught this. You can't build theology on your experience. Right. Your experience, if your experience does not match scripture, there's all kinds of pagan religions. They had an experience. You got the prophets of Baal dancing around and frantically cutting themselves, calling mm-hmm. out to a God that didn't even exist. Well, they had an experience. Yeah, right, right. Didn't mean they had a relationship with God. Everyone was in God. on it. Right. So I think that it is about, I mean, having a relationship with God and being close to him. But again, I love that passage that we may be competent, equipped for every good work. In other words, you have everything you need Mm -hmm. to live for the Lord is found in the scripture. I don't need to be manipulating. I don't need to be bringing anything else into it. Don't need any more. This is, this is what it is. And I think that we live in a day where that the authority of scripture is not being observed or maintained. Yeah. And that's you know, this is, issue. this podcast is kind of like, um, B roll of stuff that didn't quite make my most recent sermon, uh, of Jesus as Lord. Um, and a lot of the inspiration came from that being a couple weeks after Easter, um, was, you know, Jesus as our savior on Easter Sunday, the whole congregation, three services, hooting and hollering during the word, like we're loving it. Why? Because we all gain, we all gain salvation when Jesus is our savior. We gain quite literally everything. We gain eternal life when Jesus is our savior. But then to make him Lord, you surrender everything to him. Right. You surrender your ways to God's ways. Right. And it's like, oh, no, no one wants to hoot and holler during that because we have to give everything up. Right. You see you see the, the difference there? You gain everything when he's your savior, but then you surrender everything right. to his lordship. Right. Your ideas, your ways, how you want your life to turn out, you surrender it to what God wants your ways to right. be, how God wants your life to pan out. And if God says, I want you to wait until you're married before having sex, then mm-hmm. hey, he's the boss. If he wants me to be, you to be honest at work, I don't care what everyone else says. Right. What's the truth? So, I mean, I, I would agree with that a thousand percent. I love what you're saying. And then uh, 2 Peter 1, 3, his divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness, all things. You know, we, we have what we need mm-hmm. right now. There's not anything in addition that I have to wait for. Yeah. And it gets scary to me when, when I hear these kind of things where it seems like people need more. Yeah. You know, like, well, no, I have some special knowledge. I have some special things given. And you're like, be careful, you know, because God has given us everything that we need. If we're going to start putting ourselves up as the basis of, I have the authority, I have the word, it's come to me, mm-hmm. and now I'm starting to direct attention to me and away from the Bible, that, I'm telling you, that is ultra dangerous, is flirting yeah. with pride, yeah. and you're wanting to be doing the God stuff stuff that God does. That's what Satan did. Mm-hmm. He wanted God stuff role, right? Yeah, yeah He exactly. wanted to be higher, and he felt like, I don't want to be in that position where, I'm taking myself and asserting myself into God role stuff. God stuff is God stuff. I just need Absolutely. to take his word. I need to obey it and follow it. Yeah. And all will be well. And, and that's exactly what I, I was just kind of saying. It's like you have to submit yourself to God's word because it's it is everything you need. There's nothing you need to take away. There's nothing you need to add. How people, why do you want to add anything beyond right. me? I feel like the people I've ever heard who are like, oh, I think there's more to it. We're waiting for a, a third testament, whatever. It's like, you obviously haven't read the whole thing because right. how could you want more to like, there's so much to unpack and learn and apply. Right. You want but, more. Right. But where do you think these cults came from? Like Mormonism, Jehovah's witnesses. Oh, I see. They're see adding their saying? own in that. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, that makes more sense. They're adding their, they, they got a special divine revelation aside from what's here. Gotcha. And pretty soon the divine relation revelation that's come to them becomes more important and supersedes this. Okay. I thought you meant like, there's a third testament that we haven't 
no, oh, dug I was up being or had, got us given to yeah, it. Okay, no, no, I no. See, I, I mean, see, I see. like people are getting like new revelation that, in other words, well, God's going to still be revealing things mm-hmm. that are equitable to his word. Mm-hmm. Where I'm going to argue, no, I believe that canon was closed at the yeah. time of Christ because you have the the church is built on what? The apostles, the prophets, Christ is the cornerstone. Mm-hmm. That's a very defined line. It gets ultra subjective when I start saying, well, no, you know what, Eric? God told me that you need to do this. Like God told me, mm-hmm. and you're thinking to yourself, well, God didn't tell me that. Like one pastor we talked to in a right. prayer meeting, on uh, one of our prayer meetings, he said, yeah, somebody came up to him and told him, well, God, God told me that I need to be there and I need to speak on the Sunday. And as he said, huh, funny, God didn't tell me yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And this is where the subject activity comes. And another thing that I notice, Eric, is, and I think we all have to be careful of this, is reducing everything back to one thing. In other words, when you're into one aspect of counseling or one aspect of life, you start interpreting every every verse in light of what you are interested in. Mm. So they would mm-hmm. say there was at one point in Christianity, every problem in humanity was a sin problem. Not everyone. Mm. Sometimes there are mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Sometimes somebody has a chemical imbalance mm-hmm. and that's affecting their behavior. It's not always coming back to one cause. Yeah. Right. The man born blind. Same thing. The disciple says, master, who sinned? This man or his right. parents? He said, nobody. Right. All of a sudden there's problems. A demon every time. Mm-hmm. Demon every time. We, we hear things like, well, you want to be careful how you pray. You know, Satan can interfere with your prayers. Nowhere in the Bible to say that. How can Satan be in every place at the same time? Mm. He's not. He's not. Is not even possible. So, I mean, you're not even thinking logically. Like a lot of people, the whole thing, devil made me do it. Every bad thing that happened, well, the devil made me do it. And I remember one time doing the math on that. I think I just talked about it, a recent podcast of how Satan cannot be every place, you know, and at that time, 6 billion people on the planet. I said, if everyone is averaged, you know, averages six temptations a day, and we're going to blame every one of them on Satan. Right? How fast does Satan have to travel? Yeah. That's the thing. We give, we give you know? Satan way too much power. He's not omnipotent. Right. He's not omnipotent. Um, Right. Uh, omniscient. He's not all knowing. He's not in right. all places. We give him too much power. Right. And and James says this as well. Each one of you is tempted by what your own evil right. desires. Right. Is it the devil? No. That's not what James says. Right. That's not what the Bible. It's your own evil desires. Right. It's not God tempting you. Don't right. say that. It's your own evil desires that drag you away and right. entice you. And pretty soon, when you get extreme in any one position, you start getting extreme on it. You start making everything about this extreme little limb that you went and climbed out on, and you're, that limb's going to break on you mm-hmm. because you're not anymore. You're just getting so far away from the trunk of God's word. I'm going to go out here, way out in this limb, way out in this limb, way yeah. out in this limb, way out in this limb, chasing this one thing, and it becomes everything. Even uh, C.S. Lewis talks about it. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. the extremes, one way or the other, is the way that evil can get you pinned, and and pretty soon your message has is nothing to do with being back to Christ, nothing to do with what Christianity is all about. Mm -hmm. It's just this extreme thing. And now you're interpreting everything in light of the extreme. Mm -hmm. For instance, that everything has a demonic root, that any marriage problem has a demonic root. Any child with a behavior problem has a demonic root. Where does it say that? Where is that anywhere in the Bible? Hmm. Haven't read it yet. Haven't read it yet, right? <laughs> it's not in there. You don't see, Paul, like every time there's a problem, he says, husbands love your wives. Right. Wives respect your husband. You don't see these people like, hey, throw the demon out mm-hmm. or, or whatever it is. I mean, this is stuff I've been hearing since I was a kid. And it's so, to me, sometimes it gets to be a turnoff in Christianity because people get these extreme views and they just pound it, pound it, pound it. Sometimes it's been uh, prophecy. And it's been, oh, you know what? This person's the Antichrist. This person's the Antichrist. This is the year at the end of time. This is when Christ is coming back. You hear it enough for decades, and you don't want to hear any more of it anymore. Because mm-hmm. it's like, this is this has never been true. Yeah. It's man's opinion. It's just manipulating things. There's no... It's frustrating. And I think that we have to be careful not to speculate. And I, I just told the uh, group... I got to speak to the ladies on Monday night and answer questions. I said, guys, don't speculate. Mm. don't speculate don't take and build doctrine on things that the bible does not expressly teach because now you're speculating Mm. and sometimes our speculation can do a lot of damage Mm -hmm. to somebody really coming to god right yeah no even with same things uh on the similar notes like things that are good things good intentions good idea oh can't we well 
yeah, it is. It might be a good thing, but it, that doesn't mean it's from God, right? Just because right. you like it, it is a good thing, and it helps. Be, well, hold it, hold it up with the end. We that's why we have a, right. this measuring stick that is the Bible. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying. Well, like you said, you were teaching. Your, there's false prophets everywhere, mm-hmm. false teaching everywhere, and I think that we have to be very, very careful. Again, avoid the extremes. Like when you start getting these extreme views on everything, here's the Bible. This is what it. That's our view. We believe in the Bible. We're going to teach that. I start getting out on tirades, and pretty soon my whole life becomes this tangent. It could be politics. I mean, some people get so involved in heavy, hardcore into politics. Well, every Christian needs to vote this way. Every Christian right. needs to think this. Right. Every Christian needs to be careful. Mm-hmm. Careful. Because now you're interpreting all Scripture right. to suit your thinking. Exactly. And now you're bringing exactly. yourself to Scripture, and you're turning everything into what you already wanted to say. It's actually called eisegesis. I'm yeah. reading. I'm yes. reading into the text yes. instead of allowing the text to speak. I'd rather let. I know sometimes that's hard, but you got to let the text speak. You got to mm-hmm. let it breathe. You got to let it say what it's going to say. Yeah. Well, yeah. No. That's why. Um, you know, one one time I did a little self Bible study kind of thing. I took all the like famous verses I could think of, and I read like the whole chapter before the chapter where that verse is, and the whole chapter after, aka put it into context. Yep. What is this actually talking about? Right. And it's like, oh. Wow, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. It's not about me as an individual, right. isn't that something? <laughs> right. Oh it's wow, quoted all the time that Philippians way. Philippians four thirteen. Paul's not in the middle of a basketball game right now. And he's about to dunk on. No, he's sitting in prison writing this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's right. like, oh, I've only ever heard it on the basketball court. Right. Who knew? It has nothing to do with that. It has right. nothing to do with sports. Right. Things like that. It's like, oh. But I had this thought, right. and it must be right, right. you know. So it's <laughs> no, it, it it does make you laugh sometimes. Like oh, and you know, sometimes I I don't have an answer for what scripture says or me. I I don't know, right. And and again, I I can submit myself to the lordship of Jesus and His words. Like I don't I don't have to know, right. I don't have to agree with it but I'm going to live my life this way anyways. Right, because some of it's hard, mm-hmm. and some of it's challenging. It might not even make sense and to And it doesn't always fit what the world says, but it is the truth nonetheless. So that's how I have to come. Like, I have to bring myself in the Scripture, and like I've told people before, I can't change it to make you happy. Like, I just don't have the authority. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I am one little guy uh, living in right now in 2023. I have no authority to change that Bible. None. I'm not right. going to. I have no right. interest in it because that's... Now, if you're going to start changing things, then you might as well change all of it. Right. And right. it'll have no authority left. It's going mm-hmm. to fall like dominoes. You just click the one domino and all of them are going to fall. Yeah. Be careful how you handle the word of God. I mean, this is his, is breathed out from him. That's where that's inspired. This is inspired. I've always felt this this way. I, Bill McMinn, am not inspired. Mm-hmm. I don't have the inspiration I have the Bible. If I'm speaking from the Bible, then that's what's true. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I've always felt, Bill, you can be wrong. You could possibly be wrong in a decision at church or in leadership, and that's why you got to listen to other people because you are not infallible. The Bible's infallible. Mm-hmm. I am not inspired. Right, right. The Bible's inspired. You understand? Oh, yeah. I'm not saying I can't get inspiration and think about God thoughts working mm-hmm. in a garden. I'm not saying sure. that. I'm saying the authority of Scripture no, that's, that's the scripture. I don't have that same thing. And I've always seen a distinction between what I think and what the Bible says. Those two need to be lining up. And if they don't, then you got to be listening to the Bible, not me. Yeah. Right. A hundred percent. And that's true of any of us. So uh, that's all our time. I appreciate you coming in. Yeah. No, that's you why know, it's, I have hidden God's word in my heart that I might not sin. Again. Like you have, you have to know it. Right. You right. have to know right. it. And no. that's the important part. Yeah. Get into the scripture. I mean, that would be my, we are a Bible church. We're not here to make stuff up. We're here to compare truth and what we're hearing and what we're saying. It's always got to come back to this, right, this foundation. You guys all have a great and a blessed week.